دك حبايب قلبي اليوم عندنا ضيف خاص بودكاست ما حد مسوي بالوطن العربي نهائيا قبل صديقي نوام اللي على اسم جده نعيم وهو عراقي بس عراقي من وين سو ويلكم هذا طبعا البودكاست حيصير بالانجليزي كله عاد بعدين اترجم لكم اتس جونا بي لايك فيري كاجوال بيوتيفول بودكاست ويلكم سو يو نو وات اي كول ماي بودكاست از زنجين اند زنجين اتس لايك ويلثي And because I want my listeners to learn from like economic uh, information. So that's why we're going to talk about tech and stuff like that. And, you know, but in the same time, it, uh, uh, economical stuff is very boring. So I have to bring uh, uh, this chimpanzee in the, <laughs> 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 this monkey in, uh, <laughs> in the podcast to make it a little bit more like entertaining. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm the clown in the Yeah, you're the, the clown. Show. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. Tell me, tell me, you told me why uh, your name is Nawam. Yeah, because my grandfather's name was Naim. Uh, he was born in uh, Baghdad in 1909 or 1906. Wow. Yes, and uh, he married my grandmother there. And they moved with my aunt, which was two years old or one years old. And my father, which was... Uh, in my grandmother's uh, belly, she was pregnant with my father. They moved to Israel in 1950. Um, yeah, my wow. I'm called after uh, I'm called after my grandfather. So your name wow. is based on your grandfather, which is. Uh, But in the beginning, nine. I thought he's uh, the swimmer Michael Phillips. <laughs> 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 we'll let we'll let we'll let the audience uh, decide that if they get to see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's an old joke from the other day. <laughs> you know what Fira? To- you know what Fira told me is. Uh, uh, I said, do I put him here or do I put him here? He said, if you put me here, I will look fat. He looks better, so put him there. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I saw myself today in the earlier podcast, and I saw like a huge buffalo sitting on that side of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, uh, earlier I was talking to you about uh, Israeli food. And right. How, and what's, what's your favorite Israeli food in America? Falafel. 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 Israeli falafel. food in America, there's not yeah. a lot of selection. It's uh, mainly falafel and uh, shawarma and stuff like that. But I'm vegetarian, so uh, I have to do with. Wow, you didn't falafel. tell me you're vegetarian because yeah, yeah. because me too. Oh no, you actually we talked about it. Yeah, I I turned vegan for a while, but uh, 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 sometimes I, I I cheat and eat some cheese. Like I I couldn't help it whatsoever. It's difficult to give uh, give up on uh, cheese. Um, I'm vegetarian since I was 13. Uh, but cheese is something that I never, I, I always uh, made sure that I have access to. That's why when we talked about that burger, the, imbos- the impossible burger, right. where, you know. Uh, but by the way, from the economic side, uh, there is a new restaurant they d- that uh, like opened recently. It serves Israeli food. So there was always Mediterranean restaurants, okay? But it w- it never reached to the American uh, consumer In the same way, the restaurant, what is it called? The one Yafu. on Central Avenue? Yafu, yeah, that's the one we were talking about. Yeah, Yafu three locations. Is, it's it's uh, really uh, bringing the American consumers. And uh, I think uh, they just uh, they adjusted some of the foods that uh, it is good for the American. He, he actually he actually think, uh, 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 no, the, the food is as good as it is in, in Israel. Yeah, some, some, some of it, some of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the chef is, you said the chef... Uh, chef is Israeli. Uh, he, he has a business partner for the ch- that is here from Charlotte, but uh, the chef is Israeli, so he brought, uh, he knows how to pick the, uh, how to pick the uh, ingredients and make something good out of it, I guess. Yeah. And but I, they changed the shape of the falafel. It is like a little bit uh, like... Yeah, burger uh, like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it is not like the, the shape that we know. <laughs> Life is full of compromises, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, say, let's say that, let's say that, uh, that joke we, we talked about earlier. So... <laughs> <laughs> you got now the, now the <laughs> yeah, we got you. You got to give me. So, 1991. How old were you? I was 10 years old. 10 years old. Nine years old. Yeah. When when uh, you heard the sirens and, and and Saddam was trying to or or did bomb. Uh, uh, yeah, I lived in Tel Aviv, and uh, he was shooting missiles, and he was aiming at uh, basically two cities: Tel Aviv and Haifa. So my city was one of the targeted uh, destinations. Um, and I lived in a 14-floor uh, apartment building. We had about 100 apart- different apartments. And the only d- 
damage that our building has sustained was a broken glass from the shock of, I think it was the six or seventh missile that was shot at uh, Israel. And this apartment belonged to the Egyptian ambassador in Israel, Muhammad Basiuni. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Muhammad Basiuni? Yes. Muhammad Basiuni. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So the only guy, the only apartment got damaged of a guy's name is Muhammad. <laughs> in, in my building, yeah. But there yeah, were buildings that were really badly damaged. Yeah, uh, but yeah. interesting enough, in the entire uh, Gulf War, Um, we had one Israeli casualty and he died out of heart attack. He didn't die because he was hit by a missile. Oh, wow. From the shock, like from shock of yes. the... Wow. I mean, his building was hit, yeah. uh, but he didn't die from the explosion. He suffered, suffered a heart attack after that. Did you have your grandmother, your grandfather, anybody uh, uh, that uh, came from Iraq with you? No. To my grandmother. I mean, with your mom and dad. Yeah. yeah so when, when you talk to them, uh, you, see, you see them, right? Because I never seen my grandfather, so I only see my grandmoms. You mean like you lived with them and stuff? Uh, the same building, not the same house, but yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so you talk to them. Do, do they speak uh, Arabic or they speak Hebrew? Yeah, so my grandmother used to speak uh, Iraqi, the Iraqi uh, dialect uh, wow. um, with my father and my aunt. Where, where, where was your grandmother was from? She was also from Baghdad. Also from back then. Yeah, so, so she, she, she is, her family originally is from Tikrit, and she married my grandfather um, in the 1940s, and they moved to Israel in 1950. And where, where was he from? Baghdad. So he had a bookstore in Baghdad. And, wow. Yeah, and, and she and, was from Tikrit. Yeah, uh, yes, but I think her family moved wow. to, uh, I'm, to Baghdad. Wow, I'm hearing, yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> what, did they, what, did they, what did they tell you about Iraq when you were growing up? I mean, they didn't want to leave. I mean, they, they, the Jewish community really prospered in Iraq um, until, the 19, until the late 40s, early 50s, uh, you know, apart from some events like the Farhud. But uh, in general, they had really good life there. The Jewish, the Jewish community was well respected. And you had the ministers that were Jews, doctors. So the Farhud is when the other communities, they start attacking the businesses of the, the, the Jewish. Looting, I think. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and you called it in the Iraqi name actually, Farhud. We that's how it's it called in uh, like in the Israeli uh, like history books. It's called the Farhud as well. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, which is which is the 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 Baghdadi word of the 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 the, the word the looting. Baghdad. Yeah, looting. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah, my grandmother always talked about uh, uh, talked about uh, that. My uh, my uncle uh, name was David. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they're originally from a neighborhood that uh, had all the uh, uh, the Jewish community in, mm -hmm. in Baghdad. Yeah, and uh, so so she told us about the, some of the events and, and what happened and back in the day. So you know, the, I think the, you, we need to mention that it was one of the greatest communities in Iraq. Even the first financial minister in Iraq was uh, from the Jewish community, and his name is... Uh, Haskell. Yeah. He That's was, a very traditional uh, Jewish uh, Iraqi name. Haskell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really. well, that's a famous name. Yeah, by the way, the Jewish community in Iraq is the oldest uh, diaspora, the oldest Jewish community in the entire world. Wow. The oldest one, over 2,000 years, I think. Like of a continuous presence of Jews in Iraq. That is actually, that is something that Iraq need, be, need to be proud of. Yes, well, no yeah. longer. I don't think that there is any, uh, like any, any Jew, maybe just a handful of Jews that are still living there. Most yeah. of them. I saw one documentary one day that there was uh, some Jewish family in uh, Mosul. But I don't know. I mean, of course, after ISIS came there and they no. nobody came alive from that uh, terrorist group. So I'm definitely sure that nobody left there. Yeah, but as a community, like the community stopped uh, existing in the 50s, probably when 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 the Jews moved from Iraq to Israel. Uh, to Israel, yeah. I mean. So, did your grandma uh, talk another language or only Iraqi Arabic? No, Iraqi in, in Hebrew, of course. No, moved to no. Israel and um, they yeah. spoke Hebrew. Yeah, and which is the Hebrew is the uh, religion language. No, it's, it's the common language in Israel. That's like people speak in English in the U.S. People speak Hebrew in in. in In Israel, by the way, there are three official languages in Israel. Hebrew is one of them. The other is English and Arabic. Arabic is an, an official language uh, in, in Israel. In Israel, yeah. Wow. 20% of the population in Israel is uh, is Muslim, Arab. 
Yeah. Wow. Is there any problems like the, like like you know how the media show it between Arabs and and, uh, and Israelis or you know I, I don't know how I don't know how to even call it because I know some like my friend who is originally Palestinian who is Arab mm -hmm. and uh, he has a, a, a Israeli passport and he works in the Israeli TV and he tells me like you know I'm Israeli don't call me you know so is there is there um, like here in America. I see there's like, you know how we met, we talk, we have fun. We never see like, I don't see like, oh my God, there's this Israeli dude, except it's like very cool to do the, the podcast. <laughs> 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 you know? Yeah. Is it only in America where people come together and there's like only, like there's no differences because America is so diverse or is it, is it in Israel the same way? In Israel, it's not the same way because I mean, there are different communities and different cities. So the Arabs live in in Arab villages or Arab cities, and the and the, and the Jews are living uh, relatively in, in separate uh, towns. There are a couple of cities that are mixed, like Haifa, like uh, Jerusalem, like Jaffa, but uh, by large, the Israel, the the Jewish people are living in Jewish neighborhoods, in Jewish cities, yeah. and the Arabs are living uh, on in their own uh, towns. And so, as, so as I see it, where it's like more mixed here, like here, you, you, it takes a while before you know where's this person from or whatever. It's not like that easy to say. Oh, this guy is a uh, is an Arab or, or you know or Latino or you know. Oh, in Israel, it's yeah. it's it's in Israel, it's it can be it can be easy, but it can also be difficult because you have a lot of people that are Jewish yeah. people in Israel that their grand their, their ancestors came from Arab countries and they have Middle Eastern appearance. Even myself, I mean, some people would <laughs> uh, would argue that I have a, um, an, a look of uh, an Arab. Yeah. Uh, but I have friends that are like very, very dark. Uh, well, 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 you know, you're Iraqi originally. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but I have friends like in Israel that are you know Moroccan, yeah. uh, Iranian. Like they're Jews, but their grandparents came from Morocco, from Iran, uh, and they have they look like um, like Arabs. Yeah. Even in Yemen, in Yemen there is a big uh, community until now. I think uh, from Jewish community. Jewish community. Is that the, correct? Yes, but the Jewish, the Yemenis, they have like a more distinct look, so you can tell that they are Yemenis. Because they still wear the. No, because they they are they have like I don't know exactly how to describe it's it. It's like but the jeans, you know. Yeah. They have like an, an appearance that is more distinct, more more mm -hmm. like more more. Uh, we uh, we but went to um, uh, a Yemeni restaurant in Michigan. Our friend wow. Lisa. Wow, um, man! Lisa don't remind me, I will get hungry. Oh my! Oh, they have uh, <laughs> they are good. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then once you get to this one street, like you just get to, and he said, "Okay, we are in this community right now." And it's completely Yemen. It looks like Yemen. The signs, the people on the street, the everything, the traditional, and they even have the the the, the holster for the for the for the little knife they usually carry with them. But there's no knives. There's just the there's just the holster. <laughs> <laughs> but the food was amazing, man. The food the was food really was good. amazing. Wow. Now here's the problem. Uh, their stew is 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 um, they they cook it for like two days, and the meat is like completely just became like stew. And I said, hey, this has vegetables, right? They're like, yeah. So you must have some vegetables in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take those. <laughs> yeah. Like, can you go to the kitchen and get me some vegetables? And they're like, they looked at me like very crazy and, and weird that I just want. Yeah, because vegetables. people, yeah, I mean, they're usually not vegetarian. They usually eat like everything. They are omnivores. Are so. you the only vegetarian in the family? or this? So my sister became vegetarian four years ago, but up until then I was I was the only uh, vegetarian. My grandmothers, both of them, were making uh, vegetarian uh, variations for whatever they would be cooking. So my grandmother would cook at bit yeah. and uh, kube and the stuff uh, like that. But uh, she, uh, she, <laughs> she would adapt it. To, yeah. She would put mushroom instead of meat, for instance, so I could uh, I could eat it. Have you ever uh, uh, um, listened to some uh, Iraqi music? Like your grandma will turn on some Iraqi music, or yes, but I don't remember. I mean, but but yeah, yes, when I was younger. So yeah. where where did you learn Arabic? You said you high speak school. a little Arabic. Yeah, in high school. Yeah, you you can actually take um, like advanced Arabic classes when you oh, since school. because it is one of the official languages so yeah. you can they offer it in the school too exactly wow. so I was so I actually from fourth grade up until 12th grade I took Arab classes I don't remember I don't remember almost anything because it's, it's been 20 years since yeah. I graduated high school but when I was 19 20 I could speak with you in basic Arabic 
Wow. What, what did you tell us that your uh, your grandma told you usually? If she was. Ramad Alek. Ramad Alek. We don't. And yeah. I think uh, earlier I asked you about the hookah. So in America they call it hookah, and in the in most of countries. the Arabic countries they call it shisha. And what do you, you call it? Nargila. Nargila, yes. That's what we call it in Iraq. Because so. there is a lot. I mean, there is a very strong influence of Arabic in into the Engli- the, the Hebrew language because so many. But the Iraqi uh, Iraqi dialogue, I think, because dialogue, Nargila yeah. is uh, Nargila is from the, w- yeah, that's but, what we call it in Iraq. But you have other words, you know, in 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 like in slang or even that were assimilated into Hebrew that are from uh, uh, from Arabic, including like curses and stuff like that. That I would, ah. not, I would not share on this podcast, <laughs> but <laughs> it will be eighteen plus. <laughs> yeah. What's the What's the biggest community? Where w- from? What country in Israel originally? You know, like uh, um, probably Russian. Russian, Russian, Polish, uh, but in terms of Middle Eastern countries, Morocco, Iraq, uh, Iran, Syria, Egypt, oh, okay. uh, all over the place. I am, wow. uh, I am planning on doing, uh, as I told you, uh, a concert uh, uh, of to one of my uh, musician friends who uh, sing uh, Iraqi songs, traditional Iraqi songs, mm-hmm. like like your grandma will listen to, or your your mom and dad, and they will love. Lately, you saw on social media how um, a lot of the Israeli pages on Facebook or whatever are sharing that um, how strong the relationship between uh, the Iraqi youth is getting with the uh, uh, with the Israeli youth online. You noticed that in Israel? Like yes, it was actually uh, we have a couple of uh, popular uh, Facebook pages where. Um of like new media people that have a lot of uh, followers. I think Israel and Arabic may be one of them, maybe right? He, maybe he uh, he doesn't, you know, follow the one in Arabic, but yeah. I don't follow yeah. the one in Arabic, obviously, yeah. because I speak Hebrew. So I was following the ones in Hebrew. But it's like it's like a thing. It's like, because it's so unique that uh, that our Iraqi, Iraqi youth is supporting, uh, um, I would say the liberalism of of Israel and the achievements, the technology achievements and other achievements that the country has uh, achieved in the past 70 years since it was uh, incepted. There is a lot of appreciation among certain groups. uh, And it's because of the contrast between this support and the vast majority of the Arab world that right now, at least of what we can tell, is not a great supporter of Israel. So this group was uh, caught the attention of the Israeli and new media um, uh, figures. Speaking of the technology, yeah, uh, and and you are in the uh, you are in the tech field, and that's why right. you are you, you are here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Now people think that uh, uh, the U.S. government, uh, some people over there, give easier the visas to Israelis than to anyone else, and I think the process it's it's uh, it's the same to everybody, right? No, I don't know. I'm not an expert in that. Yeah, so, uh, I know that there are yeah. a lot of Israelis that are that have like. Uh, tech companies that are addressing the U.S. market because yeah. in Israel there is a very strong American influence. Uh, people speak English all the time. There is the so US for someone who doesn't know anything about the tech, let's say someone is listening to us and doesn't know anything about the technological amb- uh, advances that's happening in Israel, um, uh, many of the uh, many of the applications that actually we use is made and invented in Israel and Israel is becoming or actually is the second Silicon Valley Silicon Valley from uh, San Francisco. Now the second in the world is in Israel. Uh, By the way, it was shocking news for uh, in the U.S. because even in the I I study business. I go to UNC Charlotte, so they say that until 2005, 2006, Israel was out of the map of technology, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, all these applications started, and uh, they start taking uh, m- businesses started to move from Beijing and from uh, San Francisco to Israel. Uh, so this technology revolution uh, just happened like ten years ago. So that's not accurate, uh, from at least from what I know, and and uh, I'm in the tech scene in Israel for over fifteen years. Uh, the Israeli tech scene really started uh, booming in the early nineties after the mm. government has like uh, launched. A government-funded VC fund. It's called uh, Yuzma. Yeah. Um, what is the VC fund? It's called Yuzma. V- v- uh, VC is venture capital. It's like it's mm-hmm. like an investment fund that specializes uh, in investing in early-stage technology yeah. companies. Yeah. Uh, 
back in the early 90s, that was a, uh, almost a revolutionary model. But this really provided capital to a lot of startup companies that started developing in Israel. So maybe we have, the most yeah, we have Waze, the one of the one of the apps that actually Google bought, and it was so revolutionary, like it was a threat to Google Maps. Uh, what else we have? Uh, Wix. Waze, Wix, ICQ, which I don't know if you are young enough to remember that, but <laughs> in the late 90s, uh, the first uh, messaging uh, app, it was not an app, it was on the computer, yeah. uh, messaging uh, peer-to-peer software, it was called ICQ. Uh, I never it, used it, yeah, I don't know, because uh, the first internet that uh, got to us was in 2003, yeah, or after 2003. So, um, so ICQ was, you, you can Google it and, and find about that, but that was, uh, it was sold in $400 million, uh, which was imaginary, an imaginary amount back in the uh, late 90s. But also in your cell phones, uh, in, your, in your computers, um, Intel chips, uh, the core or the... Mo- or Which the, is the processor. The processor is developed in Israel, in Haifa. And that's uh, in most of the phones, the Samsung phones, the, uh, the you know, yeah. Exactly. Uh, the oh, wow. My computer right now, I, I uh, this is the latest one, it cost me $7,000. $7,000? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like the full i9, everything, and the, the chipset, the chip is, is made in... The, so that's yeah. where they make the i9 is the processor, the they processor ma- is that's is where they make it in Haifa. So I'm not sure exactly which components, but I know yeah, that a I significant mean portion of most it is, of the yes, processors. It's developed, it's developed in uh, Haifa. Yeah, not the not the making because the making are uh, obviously in China. You know, yeah. everybody's. Oh, there is also a factory for Intel in Israel. Oh, really? Wow! Wow! Four four thousand employees. Yeah. So do you know more of the applications that we use on daily basis? That is. Uh, was entrepreneur from Israel? So a uh, couple of applications that Facebook bought were originally Israelis uh, for network optimization and stuff like that. They're more infrastructure, so it's not uh, very famous to the consumers. Uh, Israel is not big on, on B2C or business-to-consumer applications. But it's business-to-business. Business. Yeah, it's more business-to-business, business, so the, the people usually don't know that the... Like, like the company that created the device to the when Apple did not want to uh, unlock the iPhone. Yeah, Cellbrite. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. also what? hacking companies. It's a hacking company? Yeah, <laughs> hacking companies and stuff. And they provide software to governments mostly. Or, uh, and they're, they're very big, very big companies. Um very interesting. Uh, Firo, what do you think? I think it's really interesting. And recently we, we are hearing in the news there is uh, uh, the Arabic countries, they are building nice relationships with Israel, like uh, Oman. They are uh, like uh, openly and uh, announcing that they have a strong relation, uh, of course, relationship Qatar with Israel. Before, you know, for a while, just trying to... Uh, Qatar, uh, Egypt, uh, they have relationship and they are uh, doing the trading of the natural gas and stuff. So do you think that uh, in one day in our lifetime that we will reach to... Uh, like a solution or something? An acceptance of... <laughs> so right now we have peace with um, Egypt, with Jordan, and I think that there are good relationship with other countries that some of them you guys mentioned. I think there are two reasons behind that. One is because both countries have to have what to, to, um, to benefit from it. Israel uh, develops a lot of, uh, for instance, agriculture technologies that uh, Arab countries can greatly benefit from. Uh, but there's also uh, the uh, security interest um, of most countries, yeah, there. So yeah, so Israel has, it's weird to think about it, but Israel has shared in, shared security interest uh, with Egypt and with, with Oman we, uh, vis-a-vis Iran. Yeah. That is a shared threat to the Middle East or to some countries in the Middle East. Yeah. So, yep, it's, it's they, 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 they Not officially, but uh, there was two... Uh, um, <laughs> warehouses of of uh, long range missiles that actually wasn't in Iran there were Iranian missiles that stored in Iraq and they got airstriked by by Israeli airplanes oh, i read about it in the media but really i, I have no I mean. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then we we also they're not sharing me with those plans yeah i know of they're not coordinating they it with me they, they never yeah yeah but <laughs> this this is really i mean uh, all the like the iraqi youth and uh, knowledgeable people, they think that uh, this is very uh, bad for uh, for Iraqi people that uh, militias and uh, 
group that is out of law bring missiles from Iran and they store them between the people houses and cities do you know do you know that so 65% of Iraqis are under the age of 25 really 65%, 65% so oh. now the youth you know they grew up on the internet they grew up on uh, knowing more uh, the English language you know language and then um, they they did not for example not like in, in my generation I was born in 1985 and then they did not teach us some stuff like at a school where okay we you know you have to like hate Israel or, or uh, uh, actually they focused more on hating Iran when I was a little kid even our cartoons where because there was a war between Iran and yeah, Iraq we yeah. Iraq. <laughs> by the way in Israel when you grow up I mean when I grew up in school they don't teach us to hate Arab countries not at all I mean and I think that in Israel, most people, they understand, they know that most of the people in Iran, for instance, they don't hate Israel. It's the government that has an interest to create an enemy in Israel so they could unite the people against something external. But the I think the same thing with the Iraqi people, especially how the Jewish community were one of the, the, you know, the first communities that um, took care of business, finances, uh, running trade and everything. and. Uh, I remember my grandmother used to, you know, tell us about all the stories about the Farhud, and then before <laughs> that, the great, the great stories before that. Um, I, I think it's changing, and it's it's um, for for Iraq. We have no good reason whatsoever to not have a better relationship with Israel on the economical scale, on the tourism scale. You told me your wish, the one city that you want to visit is. Is Baghdad, of course. Yeah, yeah. And and by the way, I, my my the stories that my grandparents uh, told me and tell me is that they had a great. I mean, they enjoy living in Iraq. They did not want to leave, but at some point, the government became anti-Israeli uh, and also anti uh, semi or anti anti-Jews. So they had to leave, and then the government started uh, like. Um, uh, creating uh, bad vibe with the people against the Jewish community, but my grandparents growing up, they had amazing life in, in Iraq. My grandfather had a bookstore, they were traders, they had really great life, and if the circumstances would not change uh, for the bad uh, against the Jewish community, they would stay there. Yeah, they That is actually, you know, it is real that it happened to us too. Because we were enjoying our life and everything was okay. I mean, we are the original uh, people from Baghdad. And uh, the exact thing happened to us too, because all of a sudden we, we were, were... We uh, were driven away from... I was like really little when 2003 happened and uh, America came to occupy Iraq and mm -hmm. this stuff. So, I mean, I feel the same feeling is that we were part of this country and all of a sudden the other groups or the especially you know the, even if they were little groups but they have guns and they have uh, power and they drove us so away they start and, and uh, wasn't like having control of everything and that's a, that's a, see i got i got hit yeah. with a, with, a, with a bullet and i had a dream i had a dream to build the infrastructure the internet infrastructure which is really bad right now uh, over there, the internet is really, really screwed up. But I was one of the first internet service providers, and all I wanted to do is just, you know, use internet. It was very expensive, and then I start selling it to the neighbors, and from there we put a Wi-Fi. And then when 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 the American soldier convoys used to walk the streets, they suddenly see like, what? There's Wi-Fi in <laughs> in Baghdad, and they called me, and I was like, uh, in the beginning, it was funny that I don't want to. Uh, answer the phone or I'm like I hang up on them like why would the Americans want internet from the Iraqi guy yeah. until I find out later and then we provide internet service to them and that's how we came here what what brought you to America um, start up again the, my company we have a technology company that we founded in Israel and now we are having business here and you are providing the companies providing services to uh, uh, American yes. companies so again, it's a business to business. Uh, it's business to business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Technology. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, Charlotte is a very interesting spot uh, to be because, first of all, it has a very strong technology, uh, uh, very strong uh, financial uh, market uh, industry. Yeah. The of uh, the Bank of America's headquarters, Wells Fargo has a significant presence now. The new BB&T and uh, SunTrust uh, uh, new bank is also going to be headquartered in Charlotte, and you have other smaller banks, uh, and the 
technology scene starts really developing, more and more tech companies are being established here. So it's an interesting and exciting place to be. Yeah. This, uh, I even time. heard that uh, most of the banks here, be, uh, when they build their websites and they need like uh, security systems, because you know the, there is the transactions of yep. money and stuff, so they mostly depend on uh, like co tech companies from Israel to do the security. Yes, Israel is very strong in uh, among other things like cyber, cyber security, cyber security. against yeah. cyber attacks and, and, and stuff and cyber attacks. <laughs> Well, so <laughs> at least uh, cybersecurity. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what's very interesting to me. Fira, do you have any other thing? I actually, I have a lot of stuff, but uh, what what is their time? I, I, we we hit the thirty minutes. So if you want more, so what what do you like to send the message to the to the to the uh, Iraqi youth? Which is uh, Iraq, Iraq is your uh, like your grandma and you got your grandfather your yeah. roots. Yeah. Well, I hope that one day I will be able to visit Baghdad and they will be able to visit Tel Aviv. Um, yeah, I, think, I, I hope that they would come uh, sooner rather than later. But until it does, I just want them to know that people in Israel really, I mean, they are looking forward to establishing a good relationship with, with our neighboring countries. Um, and Iraq, even though it's not an immediate neighbor because we have Jordan in the middle, yeah. uh, still is a country that we're really hoping to establish um, peace with and, and, and normalize the situation. Is there an Iraqi community? In, uh, I mean, like Israel, still like that's like, like they, they meet together and they have their own food yes. and music and stuff. Yeah, even wow. though like more uh, the newer generations, they start so forget less, the stuff. Yeah. So, they so are more like westernized, right? Yes, but also because you have uh, marriage between different groups of the society. So Jews that came from Iraq would marry would marry with Jews that came from France or Jews that came from Russia. So you have a lot of different ethnic groups within the Jewish nation yeah. that start to get married uh, between themselves. And people are, I think, gradually losing their uh, historical identity. Uh, and becoming just but when Israelis. I come to Tel Aviv, you'll take me to the to the Iraqi spot. Don't worry, if I'm there, yeah, yes. There is actually a museum. It's interesting. There is a museum of the Iraqi diaspora, uh, the Jewish Iraqi diaspora. There is a museum with a lot of like. Uh, I still haven't been there, but I want to go one day. Uh, wow! Yes. Wow! And the other day, you say something about Basra. What? 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 So my so I have three grand out of out of four grandparents that I have. Three of them were born in Iraq. From my father's side, both were born in Iraq or Tikrit, in, in Baghdad or Tikrit, but my yeah. grandmother from my mother's side, she was born in uh, Basra. Wow, wow. so that's, that explained that the Jewish community wasn't only in Baghdad, which is uh, Agdil Yahudi, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was spread no, across was in Iraq. Batsa, Amala, in Mosul. Uh, wow, this is the first time I knew this one because no, I thought it biggest. is only Baghdad. No, yeah. Baghdad was, was by far the biggest, but uh, well, it's a fact, you know. Jews wow! That came from other places. And by the way, Tikrit is the the, the, the birthplace of Saddam. Yeah, yeah. So I just uh, shared an anecdote. Uh, it's a story that runs in the family. I don't know how true it is, but my grandmother. So she was originally from Tikrit, and she told me that when she was a kid, when she was a child, the women in her family helped deliver and actually saved the life of Saddam Hussein and his mother. <laughs> I don't know how true it is, but, wow. but, but funny. So this is a story that my grandmother told me. And I, after that, I read in the internet somewhere that Saddam almost died during labor, which was wow. like very coherent with my grandmother's story. So I don't know how much of the blame for the Gulf War I, can t I should take on my shoulders. But, but uh, uh, trust me, you need, to, you need to believe this one. Trust me. You know why? Why? Because my grandma always tell me about meeting with Kadhim Sahar, the Iraqi singer. Yeah. She said, I met with him. He was in his beginnings. And I never believed her. I said, my grandma. <laughs> I'm sorry, my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> but I never believed her until... One day, he came I saw a picture yeah. of her sitting with him, <laughs> and he was putting his arm like this, and he was, uh, and that's yeah. before he became a pop star. And then 1993, he came to uh, uh, my, my uncle's house, you know, and, and that's when you believed. Yeah. Which, yeah. So before that, I was always, oh, my grandma is just making. Uh, no, I tend to believe my grandmother. <laughs> she she has she she, she has passed since, but but she had a phenomenal memory for details, uh, just unbelievable. She would remember. The tiniest details from 1945, 1950, and and like yeah, so. Wow. Uh, I was I was at I was at an airport in Jacksonville, Florida, mm -hmm. 
and coming to Charlotte. And then there these three men were talking to the lady, trying to get into a, on the airplane, and she's telling them, not yet, not yet, whatever. And I was doing live on Instagram. So I literally like, just like moved the camera a little bit. And I said, look at our people. You know, they're trying to get on the airplane before the time. You know, I'm just like, I don't know who it is. Then I, I, I went and just trying to say hi. You know, I turned off the, the camera and I just tried to say hi. And the guy just like see me and he says, um, uh, Iraqi? So usually people tell me you're Arab, you know, they're not going to say Iraqi. Uh, Iraq, Iraq, I said, uh, uh, yes, you know. Then he goes into his, his phone and he pull up this black and white picture. And he points and very little English. And something like, you know, and I'm like, well, what do you want? You know, I don't understand. Then the other guy with him, which is his brother, uh, he says, uh, grandfather, your grandfather. I said, maybe, you know, I don't know, you know. And it was the funniest and most interesting video on my channel because on the airplane, we sat at the back of the airplane, last row whatsoever, me, him, and his two other brothers. And they're from... Uh, they're from Israel, but originally from uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, somewhere, somewhere uh, uh, there. And uh, uh, as soon as the airplane took off, how he wanted to make coffee. He said, it's 11 o'clock, <laughs> coffee time, coffee 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then we made coffee, and I became like his translator, and uh, uh, the ladies on the airplane treated me like I am one of the group. Yeah. So they're like, oh, can you tell him this? Can you tell him, please, to sit down until like, and then we make coffee, and the coffee smelled so good that the captain wanted some. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I have the whole video, the whole thing. Uh, uh, on I remember story. when you told me the smell was really great also. Yeah, the smell. And wow. He had, he had uh, and he wants the water. He said, bok, 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 bok. I want it hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I had an amazing time. You can't time. blame him. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the video. Well, thank you so much. It was uh, uh, very nice. Really and interesting. Thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Naum. Thank you. Naum. 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 Like, like Naim. Naim. Yeah. Yeah. And Naim means means uh, heaven, by the way. Um, yeah, it has a similar meaning in Hebrew. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, 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 why? Uh, you, you yeah, no, I didn't stop it. Just uh, one interesting, one, one more thing. Yeah. So uh, Silicon Valley, you call oh, yeah. it? Yeah, what do you call it? Wadi, right? Silicon Wadi. <laughs> Silicon Wadi. <laughs> no, that's like yeah, it's it's like a, it's like a joke in Israel because yeah. <laughs> <in> the Middle East. <laughs> Silicon Wadi. Silicon Wadi. Wow. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right, guys. Thanks.